Hey guys, how y'all doing? And welcome back to the, the channel. My name is David and I fix RVs for a living. And today we're going to be working on this Dometic water water heater. And uh, I'm not actually going to be able to repair this water heater because it, do, it does have a big hole in it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this six gallon Dometic water heater out and we're going to replace it with a tankless Girard water heater. Uh, let's get started. So I have turned off the gas and the first thing I'm going to do is get this gas line disconnected. Then we'll take out all of these screws. We'll probably have to get some of the silicone out of here too before I can pull this thing out. But yeah, let's get started on this uh, gas. Like I see I turned it off already and uh, I actually went inside when I turned it off to confirm that it was off. And, and um, I tried to test it on the stove and the, the, the stove doesn't work here either. The cooktop um, and the, the oven are both not getting any propane. Nobody's actually asked me to fix that particular problem yet. I'll, I will mention it to them, but that might be something else we'll be doing. I also have, I took this cover off of the back of the refrigerator and there are wires disconnected and somebody's been working in there and the refrigerator does not work either. There's a, a lot of things don't work in this RV. Next up, we'll take out all these screws. kind of lucky all these screws are coming out easy sometimes they break or strip on you shouldn't have said that before I'm done might jinx myself oh, yeah, we're still doing good okay that is all of them Before we go inside and disconnect the plumbing, I want to get this plug out of here first and if there's any water in there, we'll be able to drain it. The gas line's kind of in the way of getting a socket on here. Trying to take it out with a crescent. Thought about removing this, but well, I think we'll get it. I think we'll see. <laughs> Come on. Should be able to do it by hand. I'm gonna go inside now and disconnect the plumbing before I start pulling on this thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna disconnect my cold water and my and my hot water coming in and we do have to replumb this thing too with these tankless water heaters the the hot and cold are down on the bottom they run horizontal and with the tanked water heaters it's on a, a vertical so yeah i'm gonna have to redo some of this plumbing here but right now we're just going to disconnect it i'm hoping all the water leaked out of it but we'll see <laughs> uh, i've got my towel down but that isn't going to you know, if there's a bunch of water in here. 
All right, so now I'm going to go scrape some putty off the water heater out outdoors there, and we'll see if we can get this thing pulled out of here. And uh, we'll have to disconnect these uh, wires coming in. The new water heater needs the 12 volt connections, and you know the hot and the cold and the the, the gas. Uh, this new water heater doesn't have an electric component to it; it just runs on gas only. Now it's time to start getting this putty out of here. A lot of times this stuff doesn't even harden all the way, so it's not always a... Uh, see, it's kind of spongy to get into. Boy, it's really nice here today in Washington State. Um, it's been getting cold at night, and it's really cold in the mornings too, but the days have been warming up uh, a lot more than normal. <laughs> you know, we don't usually get this kind of good weather here, uh, at least not at this time of year. But now it is October. <laughs> I was wearing a hoodie earlier, you know, I just put on a hoodie for the first time this year. There's probably no putty on the bottom. Usually there isn't, sometimes there is. I'm going to see if that's enough. Now I'm going to put a pry bar in there and see if we can pry it off. Alright. See what happens. She's moving. Say so we've still got some 12 wires to discon 12 volt wires to disconnect in there. I think we can do that after it's part way out. There still may be putty on the bottom. I don't know. I think there is. You don't really need any down here, but. Some people do it anyways. If you put putty on the bottom though, it could trap water in the, you know, in here like if water got in. I, just, I don't think you should put uh, putty on the bottom. I think it's coming. Just got to get that gas line pushed in there for one. Let's see if it'll go. Seems to be glued onto this thing or puttied onto it. This is basically a separator. To, for if you ever have a, a gas leak or something, this uh, rubber bushing prevents gas from going into the RV. Uh, so it is important to have one of these on here. With our new water heater, though, we're going to see, I'm going to cut this off here with side cutters. This uh, gas actually hooks up to the back of the water heater, so we don't need to pull this forward. Cut this guy without cutting the gas line. <laughs> that would be bad. I love that it's a flexible line too. <laughs> it's going to make it easier to hook up. All right, let me pull a little more on this. Dumping some water on my shoes. All right. Oh, these wires have a lot of length on them. There we go. Okay. Let's cut them off. I actually shut this uh, button off here. Before we took the water heater apart, I'm going to turn it back on so we can check for 12 volts out there. I hope we have 12 volts. Hopefully you can see that uh, meter. We've got a lot of glare going on here. I'm checking for 12 volts. We got three wires here, 
tube is all that I actually need. We need a positive and a negative for this water heater. Let's see, green and orange have nothing. Green and red, I mean. Let's see if uh, green and orange, the, the, that's the ticket right there, 13.25. So we've just confirmed that the converter is working. It would be around 12.5 if the converter was dead. So yay, something works in this RV. All right, now I'm going to go turn the uh, power off to those wires. Um, I just don't want those to be live while we're working on the water heater. I will be right, right back. All right, it's time for the unboxing. Now this door is sold separate from the water heater, and that is because they have more than one size water heater. So if you, if you have a, this is a six gallon, if you had a 10 gallon uh, water heater, your opening would be bigger and you would need a bigger door. So if you order one of these, make sure that you're getting the right size door for the project that you're doing. This is a six gallon water heater, so that's the smallest door as far as I know. This is the thermostat that you can use to adjust the temperature up and down. I believe it goes up to 128 degrees, but you just press these up and down arrows to adjust your temperature. It's really easy to use. The most difficult part about this entire job is usually taking this box apart so that I can screw it in. The thing bites me every, every single time. Let's get some plastic out of here. Let me know if you guys have had problems with that, too, if you've ever done this. Is this on the screen? Yeah, it's still there. Keep an eye on the camera. I don't have a cameraman working with me. I actually asked somebody to come with me today, but it was too short of notice. He said he might help me out next weekend uh, with changing out a refrigerator in a, another RV. This refrigerator doesn't work either. <laughs> um, here's what I was talking about with the plumbing, though. Let's see, right now this is upside down. Let me flip it around here. Yeah, you've got your... Let's see, what do we got? Well, I was actually wrong when I was talking about the plumbing being horizontal. Um, the hot and the cold, I kind of swore that's how it was. I, you know, every time I've ever done one of these, I've had to re redo the the plumbing now this hot and cold are a lot closer together than it was on the other tank we had one down here and like one way up um here um it's possible i might be able to reuse these but uh i don't know we'll see if if they're going to be you know too bent and out of shape or not we'll see what it looks like if i have to replumb i will i mean i was already planning on doing that anyways but maybe i won't Right now I'm just going to do a dry fit. I'm going to tuck it in there. There's a possibility that the gas line, even though it's flexible, it might have to move. I might have to drill a, a hole to scoot it over or to get it back further. I am going to have to scrape off all this putty here. Maybe it probably should have done that next, but to do a dry fit just to see how things are looking in there center it up or not probably gonna center that just to make sure that let me hold the door up um, no it's not gonna be centered it's because this is offset here so let's see once we put that on there yeah this water here will have to go further over I don't know if there's something in there blocking it from moving I just want to make sure that I don't install this thing in a spot where I can't get the door on it. <laughs> that would be bad news. That yeah, does look like this still needs to slide over. Um, there's a hose back there, I think, that's... Oh, there we go. Let's try that again. Open the door up. No, that's... no, no way to do that. See what this looks like. I think what I want to do is I want to go as far to the right as I can. Um, I'll try to screw this into the, the wall here. We've got wood here. Let's see if it still covers on the left if I do that. Yeah. 
I think that I did not make a mistake when I ordered this door. This is going to work. Now let's go inside and take a look at the plumbing and the gas and see if I have to make any modifications in there. I do have to redo everything. This is what we're going to call worst case scenario. <laughs> see the old connections are on the right, the new connections are on the left. And this water pump is right in front of where the cold is going to be. Yeah, everything has to move. The gas line is not going to reach either. Uh, what I'm going to do here though is the gas is lines coming from this direction so I think I'm going to drill a hole somewhere in here and try and refish that gas line up over here maybe and somewhere over here and go into the water heater. So this is the stockpile I've got for parts. Let me get the light off of that. I don't know about you but I'm not seeing any bypass valves down here at all. Um, I do have one of these flexible hoses. I think I am going to use this. Let me show you what I'm thinking about doing here. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do, because I do need to have a bypass valve on the, uh, the, the cold going in, but I don't need this bypass valve on, on the hot going out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this PVC around this area and then use a uh, flexible hose to 90 over to the water to get over to the water heater. And then as far as this, uh, the hot going in, I think I can cut that down here and then I'll just like 90 straight over in. And for the gas, I think we already mentioned, I'm gonna drill a, a hole in the floor over there and I'm gonna try and pull that gas line up closer to the water heater. Let's get started. All right, cross your fingers. I'm about to do some blind drilling. I do not know for sure what's underneath this. I'm just going to try not to go any deeper than I have to, but I do have the, it's a, it's a pretty wide, I think it's a one inch bit. I want to make sure I don't have any problems getting this thing up. Okay. Success. And now let me go outside and see if I can push that thing up into here. I don't think I can reach in there to grab it. Slight change of plans. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove this Romex through the hole here and I'm going to tape onto it, tape the gas line onto it and pull it up in here. I'm worried that if I push that gas line down there, I won't be able to reach in and retrieve it. I think this is a way better idea. I just need some tape. Hopefully I can find some tape so I can tape onto that. All right, I've got the Romex. That went pretty good. So I'm gonna tape these guys together and pray that they don't come apart. I'm gonna tape it up really good. Don't take any chances. I doubt if we'll get it on the first pull, but we'll see. I don't want it to kink up down there. I'm really wishing I had somebody on the other end helping me. But uh, Hopefully we'll be able to get it. Yeah, it's coming. Good deal. Yeah, that's going to reach easily. All right, nice. We need to work on the plumbing next. As it turns out, I won't be able to use this flexible hose that I wanted to use because I would need an adapter to get my PEX fittings on there. Uh, so we're going to have to do some improvisation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this PEX fitting in, in here and then I'm going to use some of, I've got some PEX A that I stock. It's, it's a little bit flexible so I'm, I'm hoping it's flexible enough to come around and get um, into this 90 that I installed over here. Right, right on there. We will see. So I'm going to put the heat gun on this and then we'll try and get my fitting in. There we go. Just need to warm this PEX up a little bit. Actually, I need to slide this over first. Don't forget that part. Let's see if that's warm enough to get it in there. Oh yeah. 
that's looking real good. Can you guys see that? Yeah, now we just got to get this on. I'll put a wrench on that in a minute here. All right. in tight. Good thing we haven't screwed this water heater in yet. That's definitely helping me to get this together. In fact, I probably won't uh, screw it in until I run some water through this be absolutely sure there we go that we don't have any leaks I have one more connection to make this is the one that I'm not even sure is going to work I hope it will <laughs> okay Rest assured, I'm going to have some bypass valves in my truck before I do another one of these guys, just in case. Yeah, I feel really sad that I don't have any. Let's give that a shot. Sound too much like running your fingers down a chalkboard. That is normal though. There we go. Nice and tight. That's what we've got so far. Now I need to get that hot connected. The hot is next. You know what, since that actually worked for the cold connection, I think I'll just do that for the hot too, and then that way we can just leave all these bypass valves in here. Yeah, let's just do that. Nice and tight. 
And the connections we don't know about is this existing stuff. You know, sometimes when you wiggle this stuff around and it starts to leak on you, all we can do is, you know, just cross your fingers and hope that that does not happen. But um, that's a, it's a good possibility. I don't like these clamps at all. Uh, you know, I use them sometimes. I've, I've got some in stock. I'm, I'm trying to use them up. But, uh, you know, I want to just get switched over to these flare-up feedings. I love these things. Um, I haven't seen these guys leak yet. I don't know if there's anything better out there, but right now <laughs> I am very happy with these guys. All right, now before I hook the gas up, I'm going to turn on the water and cross my fingers that we don't have any leaks. Okay, I've turned on the water, I've opened the valves up here, I'm going to hit the, uh, the hot at the sink, let's see what happens. I haven't turned the cold on yet. Now, let me turn the cold water on. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and just hook up the gas while we're in here, then we'll go outside and scrape off the putty, and uh, we'll screw that water heater into, into place. Snug that. Okay, now let's go outside and start. Uh, yeah, let's go start scraping. I was going to say maybe we'll just test the water heater, but I think I'm going to save these electrical connections for last. Sorry guys, my cell phone died on me while I was uh, taking all of this uh, butyl tape off of here. They didn't have any silicone, it was just butyl tape, and that's the same stuff that I'm going to be putting on again. I'm going to actually stick it right onto the door. and. Uh, you don't want to screw this water heater in first because the door actually, you know, has holes that line up, you know, with some of these holes too, and you know they both go together all at once. So I'm going to go put the uh, butyl tape on the door, then we'll come back and screw this together. All right, this is what I've done here. I've got the uh, butyl tape all around the edges, and now we're going to go. Make sure it lines up and then we're going to screw it together. I've got a couple of screws started but you can see how we've got these holes right here. Um, then there's holes in the water heater behind that too so we got to make sure this all lines up. So you, I got one in here and I've got one in here. So I'm just going to, there's two on each side, two here, two here, two here, and two here. So I've got eight total screws to put in. I like to kind of overlap the butyl tape so it hangs out here and then we'll just go ahead and cut this off with your razor knife or, or putty knife or whatever you want to use there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that next. Okay, I've got the door installed. My putty's all squished in. I think we're waterproof. Now I'm going to go inside and make the electrical connections and we can finally test this water heater and make sure it's going to work. Alright, so now we're down to making some electrical connections. 
Um, let's get started on, on that. That's pretty much all there is left to do, other than I do need to find a good spot to put this thermostat. Um, but there's just no good place to put this. <laughs> um, for now, I'm just going to hook it up in here um, just so we can test it. Then I'm going to have to come back and move it. I'm going to do my ground first. Remember, we checked these wires earlier. It was the green and the orange. This red wire over here is not going to be used. But then the water heater has a positive and a negative wire coming out of it. And these are the two thermostat wires. And like I said, I don't even know where the thermostat's going yet. I'm still trying to work that out. But I want to get this together and get it tested. These are heat shrink connectors. Uh, they're marine grade too. I like to use these on RVs. Once I get them connected, I'll put the heat gun on them and shrink them down. Am I on camera? Yeah. All right. Looks like we're in there. Let's crimp it. And you tug it, make sure it's not gonna come apart. All right, let's heat this up. Okay, that's it for that one. Been going through these things like crazy. I use them on every job. I never use these in residential. We just use wire nuts. In RVs, those stuff can vibrate apart, so you know I don't know, I don't know if I trust wire nuts. All right, I think that's good enough. Now, even though I said I don't like to use wire nuts, I am going to use them here because this is a temporary connection just for testing purposes. You know, I could just twist them together, but I don't want to take a chance of them touching. Let's see, let's do this one. This wire nut's not even, the wires are too small for this wire nut. Let's just get them on here. Okay. Um, now I'm going to hit the power to the water heater, see if we can energize these guys. I feel like that should have turned right on. I just remembered there is a power button on the water heater. Just go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I don't have any voltage here right now. So let's go see if we can get some voltage. Okay, here's my power button here. Let's flip that and see what happens. Go back in. Let's see if the thermostat's working now. Now we've 
got a power light on it. Let's see what we got here. One twenty four. That's the maximum. Now I'm going to turn some hot water on and see if it's hot. <laughs> or if it gets hot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we might have a propane issue. 66. It's not heating. Yeah, it's beeping. I don't think it's getting propane. Okay, so you guys might remember at the start of this video, I said that the gas um, oven and the gas cooktop were not lighting. Now we've got the gas water heater uh, will not light either. So. I feel like all, you know, we've got the E1 error code in there, so I feel like all signs are pointing me towards this gas regulator, LP regulator. Um, I came out here, it was hooked up to the right side, so just for the heck of it, I tried to hook it up to the left, and you can see this tape and stuff here. This thing's been worked on, the left side was leaking. Um, then I did a quick Google search on this, uh, it's a model number 620. And it turns out that this particular regulator, this is a recalled regulator. I'll throw something up on screen here, but like multiple RVs were sent back to the manufacturer so that they could um, remove these dangerous regulators. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna swap this regulator out and I'm gonna cross my fingers that this solves the problem. Well, let's get started. All right, so we've now hooked up the new regulator. Let's uh, turn on the hot water, guys, and we'll see what happens. It's definitely working. And guess what else is now working? I had the homeowner hold his hand up in the shower while we checked for the perfect shower temperature and we came up with 101 degrees. The way it's set up right now, he just has to turn the hot water valve on uh, for the perfect shower temperature and he will not have to touch the cold water valve at all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. You know, if any of you guys are in this area and you need some help, well, there's my number. Have a good one. I hope we'll see you in the next video.